Hi, I'm Joe Gerth with Courier Journal and CourierJournal.com. With me today is the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Reverend Jackson, thanks for coming. Good to be back. Reverend Jackson is here in town for the Muhammad Ali events. He was at the uh, at the uh, Muslim prayer service today, and I think it an event. Yes, it was a Muslim prayer service sponsoring an ecumenical prayer service to see on the one roof uh, the three great Hebraic religions: Judaism. Christianity and Islam and Buddhists mm -hmm. and other religions, multiracial, multicultural people who have survived apart, learning to live together was a great experience today and a great witness and to see people, this movement must carry over to all parts of our world because we certainly cannot coexist with, with violent religious upheavals. We must use religion, religion must temper our tempers and must give us a sense of love and hope and not hate and fanaticism. And will you be attending the event tomorrow? Will look, you forward, town? look forward to it. It's, uh, it's, it's gladness and, and it's sadness. It's sadness because I've known Ali for more than 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I miss him already. Uh, but he lived such a, a meaningful life, set such a, a pace and such a pattern. We find joy in his living. And to see him come full circle from being rejected in Louisville been re revered and he had not reviled in his own hometown. I think he was cut deep by growing up in the margins of Louisville, one of achieving world-class victories and being rejected at home. Right. So I have a gold medal, I can't eat a hamburger downtown. Right. I have a gold medal and I, uh, parents are to pay taxes but they can't vote. Uh, I'm a gold medalist but there's better care for the horses at, at the stadium than there are for small black children. Did, and did it, it, anger, it, 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 that sense of anger. And did the anger for here, for here in his hometown grow after he announced that he was, he was a Muslim? No, he, he grew up in, in the sense of the degradation and the segregation. But in the end of the day, he didn't internalize it to the extent that it warped him. He came out uh, better and not better. Some people internally, people when your back's against the wall, you kind of have three options. One, you can adjust and live within, within your side of your space. Right. And never aspire beyond your space. Never aspire to be mayor, a senator, a, a congressperson, a president. You never aspire. You just adjust in your, in your routine. Or uh, you can uh, resent, walk around fully aware of what's happening, angry but feel you can't do anything about it or you can resist. And Ali chose to resist and not just resent, and to uh, resist and not just, not just adjust. And he used every moment to put light in dark places. And I think about this great state. Um, his, his classmates couldn't go to the University of Kentucky to play basketball. Right. Not the University of Texas, El Paso, put that whooping on the Wildcats that they get whipped into their senses. Right, but they grew up but they grew up without the reasonable aspiration to become mayor, uh, banker, uh, uh, to become congressperson, uh, or to become judge, <laughs> to be locked into that limited arrangement. Of course it scarred him. But you get your stars from your scars. And if you if you are able to translate your stars into scars, you develop the strength from your from your pain, and champions play with pain. And as he often said, he said on one occasion he was knocked down, he didn't want to get back up. He said because he could hear bells ringing in his head. He said, but something said within him, the ground is no place for a champion. And so he got back up. And it's that sense of an indomitable will mm -hmm. that made his person unique among people. What role did he play in the American consciousness as far as it came to the civil rights movement. Um, he, you know, he was the outspoken black man at the time when there just were, where black men weren't expected to be outspoken. He well, was, let's, he let's, was uh, a guy who stood up to the government and said, "I'm not going to go kill dark people because the government wants me to." Well, let's kind of set the record straight on that. He, he, he one has to watch his evolution. Mm -hmm. He grew up like most of us did in southern ghettos and learning to want to do what you do. My, his was boxing, mine was playing football. We learned to do something to get along, to survive. And boxing kept propelling him forward. He came to Chicago around 1958, lost the fight, then he won the Olympics in 1960. And while the sit-ins were taking place in the 60s, he was not a part of the sit-ins as we know them to have been. 
I went to jail July 17, 1960. Mm -hmm. uh, we had far less visibility than they had what Champion would have. Then there was a, the Freedom Rides in 61. He was another part of that. Right. There was the March on Washington in 63. Dr. And, King and Julian Bond and, and John Lewis. And, and in Roy fact, the, the NAACP at that time did not back him in what he was doing. He, because he was not a part of that as such. But his success illuminated our aspirations. In 64, we got the public accommodation bill. Mm -hmm. which you, so you could use downtown facilities in Louisville and, and in Kentucky. Right. 65, the Voting Rights March, he was not really part of, of that march, but his success as a boxer had captured our imagination and, of course, was a source of joy for us. But then came the war. Mm -hmm. And to that, took he went to another dimension. He was champion inside the ring, arguably the best heavyweight fight in the history of the world. Right. Uh, arguably only Jack Johnson, Joe Lewis, and Ali up in that category. And his, his uh, he told me many times that his... He admired Joe Lewis. His hero was Jack Johnson. While Joe Lewis beat Max Mellon, America embraced Joe Lewis. Mm -hmm. America never embraced Jack Johnson. He has not been pardoned unto this day because he was defiant beyond the limitations of the ring. Mm -hmm. His sense of demanding his freedom as a whole person, a boxer and a person outside the ring, captured all these imaginations. He, he gave a lot of plaudits to Jack Johnson. But one must say, First, he was a master in the ring, maybe the best fighter of all time in the ring. Mm -hmm. And that gave for him fame and power and money. But to be willing to give that up for some cause beyond the ring took him from champion to hero. Mm -hmm. When champions win, people heist the chat, chat, the champion upon their shoulders. This guy hit the home run, he knocked somebody out. But heroes put people on their shoulders. Right. And he said, uh, this, war, this war does not make sense. And ultimately, that war, which killed 3 million Vietnamese and 60,000 Americans, didn't really make sense. People like Julian Bond, for example, was elected to the Georgia legislature and couldn't take his seat. The, the legislature locked Julian Bond out. Mm -hmm. Dr. King took the anti-war position. He was roundly attacked. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember August, well, April 4th, 1967, a year to the day of Dr. King's assassination. We were in the hotel room with Andy Young uh, and Dr. King, I think Reverend Abernathy, uh, preparing the speech for that night. And Ali and uh, Jim Brown came in the room. Uh, Charles Edge was Dr. King's lawyer was, and was Ali's lawyer. And he and Dr. King spent much of the day commiserating about the war and how proud Dr. King was he had taken that stand. You see, arguably the highest pedestal for an athlete in the world is world heavyweight boxing champion. He used that pedestal to make a break with tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, even celebrating, you know, when, when guys with Joe Lewis, you want a big, my, make, big match tonight, Joe would say, well, hi, Mom, I'm glad, I'm glad I win. Modest. Or uh, the f guy hit the touchdown, run the touchdown, drop the ball. All this expression of celebration that you're now in the end zone, all that's all that's all these stuff, you know. <laughs> Built on his shoulders. All that stuff, is, uh, the, the, the freedom yeah. to celebrate, all that's all these stuff. And so when they said, we'll, we'll take your, your your crown, he said, you can take my belt. Yeah. But the crown is mine until somebody takes it in the ring. He yeah. was defiant. He went a step further, they said, we'll, we'll, uh, you can't, we'll take away your license, but not my dignity. He went a step further. Uh, we'll put you in jail. You may put me in jail, but, but my, my dignity is non-negotiable. Now he's into another zone of global protest and a war that had global, that was indignant around the world. So he is the, the most visible guy in the world as an athlete taking on the most visible war in the world in which thousands were being killed every day. Right. And then somehow in exile, he survived. But to go from making six million dollars for, for 15 minutes of fighting, to becoming a pauper, mm -hmm. when the black college is getting a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars for a speech, and borrowing money from friends, when they give up the money and the fame and go to jail for a cause, putting principle over uh, over comfort mm -hmm. and putting dignity over dollars, that took him to a zone of global martyrdom. He was a living walking martyr. And so we fought hard to get our martyr champion back in the ring. And it's interesting that while we embrace Louisville and embraces him today, Louisville didn't bring him back in the ring. New York didn't bring him back in the ring. 
not Chicago, not L.A., not Nevada, a black elect official in Atlanta, Georgia, named Leroy Johnson, who is still alive, by the way. Leroy uh, was an ally fan, and they tried to fight in like 60 cities, mm -hmm. and they couldn't get in any place. But he found a crook in the law. In, the, in Atlanta, Georgia, there was no rule against boxing under those conditions. Mm -hmm. he, got, he prevailed upon Mayor Marcel, the governor, to allow them to let Ali fight. And so Leroy Johnson is the reason why he got back in the ring. This is before the Supreme Court decision. Right. And, and af in fact, after Atlanta allowed him to box there, other states then came along and said, okay, we'll grant him permission to fight. But, but Louisville must accept the fact that Louisville did not bring their favorite son back home. Right. Atlanta, Georgia did. And it shows the power of the vote. He is one, a black caucus of one. Mm -hmm. Leroy Johnson used his uh, strength to make the appeal, he called Doc, he, Ali could not practice in any of the local white gyms, and so he called President Morehouse, President Gloucester, so can he use the, the Morehouse College gym for his uh, routine, and he did. So the HBCU played a role in his getting back in. Leroy Johnson, Dr. King's classmate from Morehouse, that was the nexus, that was the bridge between exile and back in the ring, and of course, when he was back in the ring, then our, our joys were lifted again. It, the loss of Muhammad Ali at this, at this point, what, what should people remember about him um, in the future? That, what is, what that, is going to be that his? When athletes with special gifts from God have God their responsibilities. It may be David fighting Goliath. Goliath had all the strength, but David was a, a, a slinger. Slingers don't require as much stuff to fight with. But he did God's will. God saw him through. Uh, 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 Samson and the Philistines. In, in, that, in that biblical tradition, uh, Joe Lewis and Max Melling, mm -hmm. uh, Jackie Robinson, in that lineage of, of, of athletes who use their platforms to create social consciousness, he's in that. In that. Uh, but he also gave us not so much money to organizations, he gave presence, he gave voice right. to organizations. It's not enough for athletes, for example, to uh, give some money, but to give some presence. Remember when I was a kid, we were all Jack Robinson fans. He was the guy. Jack Robinson, Campanella, Don Newcomb. And the Yankees would beat us every year. Five to two, four to three, the seventh game. Right. In 55, we had the chance to win the World Series. We had Koufax and Drysdale. That was a big deal for us. Koufax, I'm not going to pitch the first game. No, yes you are. Oh, I'm not. That before the NBA as we knew it, before NFL as we knew it. And he said, it's my religious holiday. And my, we promised God on that day to honor and to rest. And we had to come to grips and respect Senator Koufax's religious commitment to his God not to put a ball game above it. Now, when Ali took the same position on his religion, there was this radical rejection. He took the same religious conviction position that Koufax took because he took it against an, an unpopular war, but a war nonetheless, and it put him out there. Uh, what impresses me so much about, uh, he never lost his love for Louisville, never lost his childlike dreams for his hometown, never, saw, never s ceased to be available and accessible to people whose backs were against the wall. He had a sense that uh, everybody mattered. And I think today, if he had seen there's thousands of people breaking in the door, black and white and brown and Muslim and Christian and Jewish and Hindu, embracing and praying together. That'd be the crown, the crowning glory of his, of his work.